Are you trying to plan for 2024 and want to cut down on your compute spend? Well, we understand that there are a lot of different KPIs when it comes to cost optimization, and it's really difficult to find that one KPI. The good news is that rate optimization, you only need to look at one key KPI, which is the effective savings rate. AWS and FinOps Foundation have already started adopting this key KPI. And in this presentation, I'll talk you through what effective savings rate is, why it matters, and the insights we found from our analysis. Plus, I'm going to share some of the actions you can take once you know your ESR, aka the effective savings rate. My name is Grace, and I'm the product marketing manager at Prosper Ops. Prosper Ops is a cloud cost optimization platform that provides you with autonomous discount management and financial reporting. We were founded in 2018 and have over $1.5 billion of compute usage under management. We want to help you maximize your savings while minimizing risk without any ongoing engineering efforts so that you are in the 98th percentile of all your FinOps teams. We serve some of the largest SaaS companies and also partners. But today, I want to really talk to you about what effective savings rate means and why it matters. So you're probably familiar with some of these key metrics like coverage, utilization, or maybe discount rates. Yes, they are not unimportant, but they don't tell you the whole picture. And they don't tell you the actual savings outcome. Whereas Effective savings rate is a key business measure that assesses how effective you are with your rate optimization strategy so that you can get the best returns. It's almost like a return on investment in a financial context. And that is why Prosper Ops, we're really laser focused on your ESR. Formulaically, ESR is calculated as the aggregate discount off of the on-demand rate across your cloud usage. Now, you can look at it in terms of your compute usage. You look at ESR in terms of a particular AWS service, such as an ESR for RDS, or you can even calculate it as part of your total compute usage. You can also make it very customized such that it can include or not include your EDP or PPA. So in order to understand what your rate optimization strategy performance is, you need to first calculate your ESR and then understand how you compare against peers. We've already done the hard work for you in terms of comparing against peers because we've looked at thousands of anonymized data of AWS orgs over the past 12 continuous months from 2022 to 2023 year to date, encompassing $1.5 billion of compute usage. We looked at monthly ESR we looked at usage and we looked at coverage. And we looked at specifically compute, which includes EC2, Lambda, and Fargate. We specifically looked at prospects because we feel that that represents a point in time in which companies have not used Prosper Ops for autonomous commitment management. So it's a true measure of what they're doing. First, we found that rate optimization is generally pretty poor improvement can result in cost savings. We looked at percentiles, and just as a reminder uh, what percentiles are, 50th percentile is the median. The 95th percentile, on the other hand, is if you are higher than the other 95% of the data points. The compute ESR at the 50th percentile, or the median, was 0%, which means that many companies did not utilize discounts or see savings. Even at the 75th percentile, we see that the ESR for compute was only 23%. This means 23% savings on a dollar on demand prior to any EDP or PPA. Keep in mind that there are many engineering choices that you may not have control over that affect your ESR. AWS varies discounts based on region, based on instance family, based on operating system, and based on the discount instrument that you choose to use. And that can affect your ESR unfavorably or favorably. Second, when we dug deep into 
what kind of discount instruments were being used, we found that 53% of orgs did not use any savings plans or reserved instances. This might be because of the convention that rate optimization has to follow engineering optimization. And historically, that made sense because you did not want to do rate optimization um, before engineering optimization since you had unchanging immutable commitments. However, with automation now, like tools such as ProsperUps, you can now match your commitments to changes in your usage, both planned or unplanned sudden changes. So you don't have to wait until you finish engineering optimization to do rate optimization. And you can start your rate optimization in parallel. In the reality, engineering optimization really never stops. Things are always changing. So keep that in mind. So when we looked at different kinds of discount instruments, we found that savings plans were the most popular. This is unsurprising because they are easy to implement, they're recommended by AWS, and they require no effort after being purchased. Standard reserved instances follow. They've been around the longest, but they are also immutable. You would need to swap them in the RIA marketplace in order to get rid of them. And then finally, convertible reserved instances are the lesser known, and they tend to be what ProsperOps favors because they are the only discount instrument that allows you to change commitment terms after you made the purchase. Savings plans, on the other hand, are long-term. They're really immutable. So those are some of the risks and disadvantages. When we looked at ESR and how it's changing over time, on the surface level, we see that ESR has been improving from 2022 to 2023 year to date. We see that technology companies have reduced their compute usage and or optimized their engineering in the past year. Maybe it was due to the economic downward trend, um, maybe because they were up more effective with their engineering. Your company may have been doing the same. Now, this temporarily increases your coverage and drives up your ESR. But again, this might have been temporary and sometimes even unintentional. However, the question to ask yourself is if your ESR is sustainable or not. AWS Q3 earnings report shows that the revenue trend has flattened since the last quarter, which indicates that perhaps we're at the end of the downward trend. So in order to maximize your ESR and to see consistently high ESR, you need to be thinking about your long-term strategy and be thinking about increasing savings rather than just decreasing your usage. There are also some interesting differences in ESR when it comes to different magnitudes of usage. What we see is that ESR and usage tend to correlate. So companies with low usage where we've defined as less than $1 million per year, had much lower ESR and much lower coverage than those with higher usage, as you can see in the chart. Uh, We're not saying that usage has a causal impact on ESR, but it is correlated. This probably is due to the fact that lower usage orgs may have lack of resources and expertise in FinOps, Uh, They may also underestimate the impact of rate optimization versus other optimization tactics. And then finally, perhaps these other lower usage companies have been using less flexible instruments, such as savings plans, which are putting them at overcommitment risk. On the other hand, companies with higher usage tend to have higher ESR. And that's because they're putting the practices in place. They have the resources and they're putting in effort. This can also be because their business is growing and you may be one of those businesses that's growing, that's increasing your usage, and you can keep on aggressively buying discount instruments as long as your growth is is increasing. As you've seen in the previous slide, I mentioned that, you know, if you're on the high end of usage, you also tend to have good ESR. So you may be wondering, well, if my ESR is already world-class and optimized, what's the point of doing even better? Well, we see that even at higher usage and higher ESR, you can still generate substantial savings. For example, if you have five percentage point improvement on ESR, 
on a $10 million annual usage, you can still generate $500,000 of annual savings that can be put into additional resources such as engineers. Savings plans and reserve instances each have their strengths and weaknesses. So we think that a portfolio approach enabled with automation can better map your commitments to your sudden unplanned or planned changes in usage. Automation is also much faster and much more reliable than a human. Not to mention, you may work in complex environments where you have tens of thousands of state changes per month. So any one of which can need optimization action. And moving on to our next point, we looked at four segments based on ESR data. Now, keep in mind that this is point in time ESR data and the best strategy is to maintain a high ESR, which means you're consistently doing very well. In this orange segment, it means that you have negative ESR. So you're paying a premium to the on-demand rate, perhaps because you have underutilized commitments, maybe you're overcommitted, if you have standard reserve instances, you want to try to exchange them in the RI marketplace. And if you have convertible RIs, that's great. They're super flexible. And with automation tools like ProsperOps, they can help you manage those convertible RIs. Now, if you're in the green area where your ESR is below the 75th percentile, so from 0% to 23%, you have a real upside to improve your rate optimization strategy. Perhaps you're not adapting into the changes in your usage. Maybe it's a little bit more volatile than what you had anticipated. So you need to use a combination of not just savings plans, but also more flexible instruments like convertible RIs to help you adapt to those changes in usage. Okay, now if you're in the blue shaded area, you have 500K or lower in usage and your ESR is okay or even world-class. So the question to ask yourself is if your ESR is sustainable and how your usage will change in the future. As I mentioned before, a decrease in usage will temporarily increase your coverage and increase your ESR. But in the future, if you anticipate increasing usage, but also volatility, savings plans coupled with convertible RIs are a good start. And if your ESR is consistently high and you don't anticipate any usage changes and it's pretty stable, then you're doing great. But how many of us have usage that's consistently stable all over time? So if you're in this area, which means that you have high usage of at least 500K or maybe millions of dollars of usage, or maybe tens of millions of dollars of usage. And perhaps your ESR is world-class, it's above 75th percentile, then you're doing great. But again, you need to ask yourself if this is a long-term strategy and if you're gonna consistently maintain that ESR. There are three questions I would ask myself. First, I would wanna know how much incremental value can get, I get from further maximizing my ESR. Say you're in the 80th percentile, how much more material savings can you gain from moving to the 98th percentile? Now that depends, right? I've shown you in the calculation before, you can still have a very ma substantial material savings, even if you have a low percentage point increase on a large usage amount. Second, you gotta ask yourself if your strategy is sustainable. Do you see declines in your usage patterns in the future from engineering optimization and you're still using savings plans? Then you might be putting yourself at risk of overcommitment. Does it make more sense to use more flexible instruments instead, such as convertible RIs that adapt to your usage pattern? And finally, you might want to ask yourself how you can offload the work with technology that automates. On the last point, if you're operating at a level in which you have or you're considering an EDP or PPA, a flexible strategy will allow you to sync your expiration of your commitments to the EDP PPA terms. This might be important because it allows you to have more leverage so that you're in a really good position 
to negotiate with AWS when renewal time comes. I really hope you learned something from this presentation. Definitely check out ProsperOps and learn more about ESR from prosperops.com slash effective savings rates.